Hi, my name is Hiran Shukla, and I am the EY Global Neurodiverse Center of Excellence Leader. I'm really excited to join you all at the Neurodiversity India Summit 2021 uh, with all my friends that you've been hearing from and how excited we are around the opportunity to have inclusion be the center of how we build value for individuals, communities, and business all at the same time. You see, for me, our neurodiversity journey began seven years ago at EY when we began thinking about how are we going to create innovation capacity, create value for the world, build an agile and resilient workforce, and use the power of private organization to really influence how the paradigm of disabilities and neurodiversity is seen in the world. And as an individual who has no personal connection to neurodiversity, it really engaged me to start thinking about in the entire population in the world that has this inherent cognitive difference, autism, Asperger's, dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADHD, we know that somewhere in the range of 15 to 20% of the world's population has an inherent hardwired cognitive difference. And at EY, I began to think about this as an innovation and a business leader. How do you tap in, include this power of thinking differently in how we build solutions, how we drive our brand value, and how we bring better service to our clients? And that EY, we've been on this journey now about six and a half years. We are live today with our Neurodiverse Center of Excellence model with 300 full-time employees in 13 centers of excellence in six different countries around the world. The US, India, Canada, Poland, Spain, and now the UK. And we know that this journey of neurodiversity starts with awareness. This is one of the reasons why I'm so excited to join you today. But awareness has to lead into education. Education has to lead to engagement and engagement ultimately has to lead to implementation. From an employer perspective, implementation means a strategic programmatic view of how you're going to build a scalable and sustainable model that employs this amazing untapped community of neurodivergent individuals around the world. And when we think about the ability for business like EY and many of my other friends that you're hearing from uh, during this summit, we have a unique need and we have a unique platform. And this is where I would like to talk to you about some key areas, specifically from an employment perspective, but more importantly, how to build that scalable and sustainable program. Because at the end of the day, it's going to take the ecosystem of business, government, academia, NGOs, self-advocacy networks and groups. And if we don't all lean in together to support and drive the value of this model, neurodiversity, we'll never see the benefits that are so important in transforming our communities and how business gets done. And I think about this, if I step back for a moment, what are employers thinking about today? And there are four things that employers are thinking about. Digital transformation. How is that organization, public or private, how are they going to take advantage and make sure that the power of data and emerging technology is incorporated in everything they do? Whether you're a manufacturing organization, a technology company, a financial services organization, digital transformation is something that you are thinking about. 
The second avenue of what we know every organization is dealing with today is where is this workforce of the future going to come from? Strategic workforce today consists of traditional individuals in traditional roles, but it also now consists of digital assets or automation. It also consists of offshore and nearshore resources, outsourcing. And we also think about at the end of the day, where is this agility and resiliency going to come from? Because the last 20 months during the pandemic has shown us that an agile and resilient workforce is what is absolutely needed, not only to survive today, but to thrive tomorrow. And so that's the third angle of what uh, folks are talking I'm sorry, second angle. The third one is our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in the past 18, 20 months, you've seen a lot and heard a lot of executives and organizations talking about their commitment to race, gender, age, sexual orientation. We want to make sure that cognitive diversity is a deliberately acknowledged aspect of a organization's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And more importantly, it's the results that you're going to drive from having a high performance team that consists of age, gender, race, sexual orientation, and cognitive diversity, because that diversity is going to produce better results. So that's the third thing that we know that organizations are thinking about. The fourth one, and maybe one of the most important now, is the broader ESG agenda, environmental, social, and governance agenda. This has often been communicated by organizations like the United Nations when they're talking about their sustainable development goals or the World Economic Forum as they talk about how do you build prosperity in people? How will you create equity and economic prosperity? These topics are really transformational because organizations today are no longer valued on just shareholder value, but they're valued on how much they create for stakeholders. This means the people in your community, your environment, your supply chain, your employees. So large organizations like EY and many of our clients are thinking about value creation. And as EY has been on the neurodiversity journey, hiring individuals, applying this unique cognitive diversity to drive better solutions, to engage our clients in important discussion and taking their commitments to diversity, equity, and inclusion and converting that into tangible outcome and results, we have seen the opportunity to be greater than ever. So few things that I'd like to talk to you about today is those four avenues of intersection, and let me repeat what they are really quickly, digital transformation, strategic workforce, results-driven, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and last but not least, the ESG or the social pillar of value creation and how organizations are going to create value for the communities that they live in. In the middle of this intersection is where we at EY have seen tremendous value opportunity by not only hiring neurodivergent individuals, because as you all know, hiring is the first step. And before hiring, you need the support systems, you need NGOs, you need government, you need everybody to drive awareness and activation so that we as a private sector are using our voice and platforms to say neurodiversity is important. It's something that we recognize. But after employment, there has to be a career journey. Where are these individuals going? How do they enjoy the same benefits 
of progression and growth and opportunity as everyone else. We know that support systems require organizations to build in all of this muscle or to source it and to collaborate with others. So there's an idea that I'd like to present that we at EY have now been seeing tremendous traction on. We call it our global neurodiversity accelerator model. And when we say we're accelerating neurodiversity on a global scale, this means every city, every state, every country we go to, we need to activate other business to join us in the journey. We have been very lucky to date to partner with some of the world's most household recognizable names from Microsoft and SAP to Procter & Gamble and Wells Fargo. And now with ServiceNow, where we just made an announcement where we're going to create $1 billion in value. One of those pillars of creating value is neurodiversity. But the global neurodiversity accelerator model means that we have to deliberately include all of these components of stakeholders in a community to come together. So what I'd like to talk to you all about and have you think about and then talk to others about later, how can you be a part of this ecosystem? How can you tell at least five other people who are not in the session today, how they can get involved in this. And without your voice, without the sweat equity and involvement of all of us, we will never transform lives, communities, or business process. And all of this is in the background of telling you all, at EY today, we have now seen and benefited with our clients with over $650 million of value. This is hard dollars we're talking about. We have now automated, optimized, or built platform that effectively leverages data and emerging technology to the tune of 2.6 million hours. We are creating velocity in the world, in the business world, in the human world, where we know today you cannot find enough people to do the amount of work there is when we look at particular areas like cybersecurity or cloud implementation or artificial intelligence. And this has been EY's focus. We realize neurodiversity is a big spectrum. The ambitions, the capabilities of individuals are all different. But one of the key aspects around value creation is each organization asking themselves a really important question. Why are you interested in neurodiversity? And unfortunately, having just a personal passion around neurodiversity is not enough to build a scalable and sustainable model. In my last statement, I'm speaking directly to employers right now. If you're listening to this, you need a business case. What is your business case for leveraging and tapping in and integrating a really diverse pool of candidates and employees where you will unlock innovation value broader than you've ever seen before, deeper than you've ever seen before. And if there's ever any doubt, please call me because we will gladly tell you and show you this value creation opportunity where you're simultaneously creating value in your digital transformation space, in your talent and workforce space, in your commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and building value for your communities. This exists today. We're already doing it. This is no longer theoretical. So as I talk about all these things, there's a lot of questions behind how do you do this? Where do you start? You know, I would take you back to what I just said a few moments ago. Employers, you need a business case. You not only need executive sponsorship, it's one thing to hire one, two, five, 10 individuals. But when we think about large organizations, 
you should be thinking about hiring representative to the scale of your business. And no longer is this being thought of, in my perspective, as a charitable philanthropic effort that is based around corporate social responsibility. The neurodivergent community is ready and willing to learn. This is probably one of the most resilient co communities that we have ever seen. And when we think about the future of work, the definition of a worker, and the fact that COVID has changed what the workplace is. We all work sometimes remotely. We're working in a hybrid environments. This is an opportunity where there's going to be a tremendous opportunity and transfer of value and growth of value. And in this case, again, I'm imploring and directly speaking to the employers that are listening here today, you need talent. You need to retain that talent. You need to grow that talent. The neurodivergent community is an area that provides tremendous value. And we know that our commitments to talent as employers today cut across race and gender and age and socioeconomic class and sexual orientation. And so as you begin hearing from all the great speakers that are included in the summit today, I would love for you to take a few moments, step back for a moment, think about what is your strategic journey? How do you successfully build and integrate from a programmatic perspective, the commitment that your great companies have, the sponsorship and advocacy that you will need to get, the business case that will support why you think these changes in hiring process, the support models that will be required as you hire and onboard neurodivergent individuals, all of those answers will start coming together only when you think about what is your long-term journey. And at EY, we've been committed to something from day one, building a better working world. That is our motto. That's what we say that we're going to do. Sharing this information with you, giving you live examples. Where have we seen success? Where have our clients seen success? Where have we not seen success? Where are the challenges? We would love to help you in that journey, think through this, because at the end of the day, there is a massive opportunity for collaboration. And today, the world needs collaboration more than anything else. But to collaborate, we have to include everybody. We need all the voices at the table. And often what has been missing has been the voice of our neurodivergent community, as part of our broader disabilities community, we need to make sure that not only are we creating a seat at the table for them, but we're stopping to listen to their voice and what they think about things. So in closing, I would say to employers, there's no longer time to think about this. <laughs> your urgent needs, your burning platform around talent and innovation, data and technology and building value is greater than ever. So with that, my name is Hirad Shukla at EY. Please call on me so that we can help you in your journey. Thank you.